So at 238,000 miles, if you look close, we can still see the original crosshatch of the uh, the honing pattern on there. And there's no, I, you know, I can't even feel a lip on there. So the cylinder walls are in fantastic shape. Not much, uh, not much wear in there. So, man, this. Uh, I think that's pretty impressive. So, should we start by taking number one out? I guess that would be a logical thing to do since that one uh, has the, the most issues. Just go in order. You know, one, two, three, four. <clears throat> we can always turn the crankshaft over to raise or lower the pistons. But we don't even have to worry about this little lip on here, you know, for the piston rings. I mean, I guess we could clean it up a little bit with a little Brillo pad or something. But, yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty cool. Oil pan is on the ground. Check it out. So here, we see our connecting rods, main bearings. Now let's count them. One, Two, three, four, five main bearings for the crankshaft. And now we have one, two, three, and four. Those are the connecting rods for the pistons up there. Let's see if you get a little better lighting. You can actually see the bottom of the piston. So let's start at cylinder number one, the one uh, above this oil strainer. You should actually have pretty good access right here. So I'm going to unbolt these and we'll try to get the piston out. There she is. Piston number one. Now it's time for a little analysis and inspection, right? Immediately, we can see the issue here. So, top two rings are compression rings. They look beautiful. Slide around. Look at our oil ring. It is kind of a, I guess from heat, the oil just Cokes in there, and these rings are supposed to be spring loaded. I can't move them. That's beautiful. <laughs> that's that's the issue with these uh, with these engines. So these oil rings just get stuck and stop. You know they're not spring loaded against the cylinder wall anymore, and oil gets through, and that's it. You get oil burning. So what we're going to do now is measure clearances for the rings and uh, well obviously we're replacing the oil control ring the other two I know you guys are going to yell at me but I'm just tempted to leave them as is since there's nothing wrong with these piston rings again we'll put them in the bore we'll measure the gaps but if they're the same as the new ones I want to keep the old ones back back on here all right, here we are on the bench. This is piston number one. What we want to do here is look at our Haynes manual at the general engine overhaul procedures and pistons and rings. So here we have our piston ring groove clearance. I'm interested in that and piston ring end gap, which you measure in the cylinder bore. So, there's number one, top compression ring, that's this guy here. Then we have a number two, middle compression ring, that's the fatter one, in the middle. And then, oil ring. Now the oil ring, <laughs> I guess, uh, you know, on the piston here, it looks like a one-piece design, and effectively it is, since it's the oil kind of baked itself in there, it's all one seized unit but it's supposed to be three pieces so these two really thin 
metal rings and they are spread apart by this uh, like kind of like a spring you see it's uh, it's kind of a I don't know a two-piece spring that holds these little uh, outer pieces apart and presses them against the actual bore in the cylinder block. It helps uh, clean the oil off. The other issue here is if we look inside you can see there's supposed to be four little holes to help lubricate that oil control ring. Let me point that out. Let me grab something here. So there's one right here, two, three, and four. They look really, really clogged up in there. And on this side look a little cleaner. There's one, two, three, and four is in the shadows. Right in there. So basically what happens here, just from the heat, you know, this gets really hot, there's a combustion occurring right on the head here. <clears throat> Basically the oil just gets cooked. And I don't know if this is avoidable, maybe if you use synthetic oil, you know, frequent oil changes. Again, before my friend got this car, it was owned by, you know, whoever, and maybe they neglected a couple oil changes, and this happened. So, uh, who knows, right? But once the oil ring seizes, not much can free it up. You know, maybe the rev up tune up with some sea foam, perhaps. There are different treatments that you can try, like chemical treatments, but the real fix is to just replace that oil control ring. So I'm going to check the piston ring end gaps right now, just to see what our old ones are, and to see if we need to install the new rings. Alright, piston ring groove clearance. That's what we're looking for and it says 0 .0012 to 0 .0028 inches. So we have our feeler gauges out and the finest one I have is 0 .0015, that guy there, 0 .002, 0 .003. So, <clears throat> let's try to slide these guys right in the groove trying to get good lighting here so basically if it slides in the groove and there's a little drag that's your clearance so like the top ring 0 .002 slides in with a little drag and 0 .003 not quite so we are within specifications on the top ring. Now let's try the middle ring. 0 .002 is having a hard time fitting. 0 .0015 fits. So again, that's within specification. And the oil control ring, well, we just have to get it out. So actually I'm going to take, uh, to avoid damaging these rings, I'm going to take the top one off first. Now they do make special ring expanders and uh, you can kind of spread the ring apart but sometimes the best thing to do is just be real gentle just do it with your fingers there she is now these are directional there's always a top and a bottom usually they have some kind of markings on them so I'm gonna place them like this so top is up now the middle ring it's a little trickier since uh, you can't just slide it to the top there's probably pro engine rebuilding guys and they're like you're doing it wrong well for this one I might get a little uh, expanding pliers to get that one off 
with just some expanding pliers. Go in our gap here, being really gentle. Let's see, let's get a better grip. Expand the ring. Got her. All right. Put this one right here. Now the oil control ring. I'm gonna have to find a way to chisel that out without damaging the piston. This is soft aluminum, but that guy is uh, seized in there. So I'm trying to get this oil control ring out. Just prying in the groove. Oh, there's a. Uh, there's one started. Actually, that came out pretty nicely. There's one. Now, the spring should also have a junction just like the new one does. Right, kind of see that little wire it expands right there. Hmm. Well, I'm going to try to get the lower ring out. There's, I see the gap right in here. Huh, it moves. That was a little easier than I expected. There's two. Like that. You can see how much sludge buildup is on there, hopefully. And now this thing is actually free to move. So not bad at all. Uh, find the gap here. So we're going to expand this. There we go. There's the oil control ring a whole bunch of crud on it and you see how dirty the piston is in here and those holes yeah they're clogged up look at that so I don't know what the best way to clean this is maybe use uh, one of the old rings or a little wire brush or something get all that crap out of there but it shouldn't be too bad. So I'm just using a fine tip of the Leatherman to get into this oil groove. And look how much crap has already come off this piston. It's just burned on there. So I'm going to keep doing this. And then we'll need to unplug these holes. And I can just poke through them. I mean, these are really plugged up. Use a little pick in there. These should be you know free flowing. What about a little drill? Can we drill these out? <laughs> Don't drill the aluminum but maybe a fine fine drill bit would be a good Good way to go right here. So you already see the holes starting to uh, appear right there. So I'm going to finish cleaning this up, and then we're going to go measure some piston rings on the engine block. Looks like a 1 inch drill bit is perfect for getting into these holes. It doesn't remove any aluminum. 
when it gets them nice and clean you see how much junk is coming out of there so I'm just going to take a drill and clean out all those holes one two it's really satisfying to see all that junk come out of there four uh, looks like there's one on the side here these are completely solidly plugged I think I'm drilling into a piston, right? <laughs> kind of freaky. Now there are two holes on the side here. I'm not sure where they go. Because they're right on top of the wrist pin. So I don't know how far they go or if there are through holes, but I think there should be if... Uh, you know if they're there. Alright now I want to measure the um, piston ring end gap of the top compression ring. Uh, standard gap is 0 .0098 so about 0 .01 inch and there's a service limit. So coming over here I've installed the number one ring in the bore and we just take our piston and set it down in there. Make sure that ring is nice and even in the bore. Okay. Now we take our feeler gauges. You can see there's the gap and the gauge that just slightly drags in that gap. Right there is 0 .011. So that ring is, the gap is perfect in the original ring. So let's get this one out. Now I want to measure the gap of the new ring. So keep this right side up. Our new rings are right here. So we'll take the thinner compression ring. install it in our bore carefully okay use our piston to move it down about that much and there's the end gap right there so let's see what that is I'm going to try the same feeler gauge and it slides right through perfectly. Let's try the next size up. That's a 12. Twelve slides through pretty easily. I'm going to get a 13 out. So 13 did not fit. So that gap is 12 hundredths of an inch. Um, so you know we can use we can use the new ring. That won't be an issue. Let's put this guy back. Now let's measure the top or the second the middle ring. That's the fat one. Again, same procedure. Let's push it down with our piston. Okay. There's the gap right there. What was our specification? Anyone look? Number two middle ring point 
0.0138 to 0.0197 so about 0.015 would be good and then source limit is huge 0 0.04 all right get the gauge out so this ring turns out to be between 0 0.025 and 0 0.028 inches so let's try the new one so the, the new ring gap is only 0 0.015 so looking at our specs it's uh, the new ring is a lot closer to the smaller specification here and the old ring was uh, was 0 0.025 so that was actually out of the standard limit so this thing's getting new rings all around. Now that our piston is cleaned, we're going to install the oil control ring separator first. Now that will go in our bottom groove right here. All right. Now the oil control rings upper and lower half. So first let's do the lower. And basically you just start it down here and then these guys are really thin so they're not that hard to expand and get where you want them to be to go. Let's see like that. Slides around unlike the uh <laughs> the old one. Now the top rail of the oil control ring, same principle. Now we also want to, I guess, stagger these uh, in the service manual. They don't specify staggering sequence, but uh, you know I've put together motorcycle engines before, and usually they stagger the rings just so there's no overlap of the gaps and you know to. Make sure your compression is <laughs> optimal. So I just might look up a staggering sequence in my motorcycle manual and just follow that just, just because. For example, looking at our Yamaha XS400 staggering sequence right there. So there's our piston. Our oil ring lower rail and upper rail are 180 degrees apart. And then the top and second piston rings are 180 degrees apart. And right there, uh, it's saying so 50 degrees. So basically, you know, something like this, I'll, uh, I'll stagger it that way. Now with the oil control ring, I got them staggered. So there's one gap right here for the lower ring, 180 degrees apart, upper ring. Now this should be spring loaded so if you press with your fingers on all sides you should be able to kind of squeeze it in. So that's what is going to keep our oil from coming up into the combustion chamber. Sweet! So second ring, let's install that. Our new ring right here. Now you have to watch out. The marks right here should be facing up. There's a little mark on the end of the ring. It says like 2R or something. So we're going to put that like so. Just wipe all this stuff off of here. Alright. So for this guy, we could use a piston ring expander, or just carefully do it with our fingers. So we're going to the second groove. Okay. There it goes, and just work it all the way around, right there. 
beauty. <laughs> right? Like Dave Jones from uh, EEV Blog says. Well, there, there's our second ring. And finally, compression ring number one, the top ring. We'll stagger that. 180 degrees apart from uh, from the second ring. Okay. Again, start it like that. And she goes. Sweet. I don't know what these yellow marks mean. <laughs> Am I supposed to line those up too? I don't know. The yellow mark there. You know, mark there. I don't know what what would happen if we uh, if we line those up. Anyways, so our piston is ready for installation. So to install the piston assembly into our engine block, I bought this piston ring compressor tool at Napa. So let's give it a try. See how it works. Nothing fancy, just a metal clamp. Alright, now we need to install our spring piston ring uh, compressor on the piston. So the way this gizmo works is uh, there's a little release tab here and you put a special tool in here and it, you can make the diameter bigger. Okay, big enough to fit our piston inside with the rings. I don't know what the best best method here is. First one I've used, first time I've used one. But anyways, now that we're here, we can tighten this guy. see here. <laughs> Make sure the, uh, the inside is lubricated with your favorite favorite spray. So we want those piston rings to be able to slide out of this collar right into the engine block. So tighten this guy down. All right. Like so. See it's nice and tight. And uh, the piston can still slide in there. That's, that's all good. I actually don't know how hard to tighten it. Let's go over to the engine. Alright, here we go. There's actually a dot on the face of the piston and all those face towards the timing belt. So, I guess we'll just drop her in. So make sure the skirt goes in nice and even. And then from here, We'll just use a handle from our plastic hammer. Just tap her down. That worked like a damn charm. So I guess all we need to do now is just push it down and line up the connecting rod. Torque at the factory spec and do three more. I won't bore you with those details. Uh, next thing, after I clean and service the pistons, we'll, we're going to move on to our head. I'll show you how to take out valves and clean those up too. Alright, new piston rings are in. Clean pistons. Look at that beautiful engine. I'm getting pretty excited here. Head gasket surface is cleaned up. 
Uh, now we gotta put the oil pan back on and then deal with this sucker. Golf cleaning.